What baffles me is that I did not know about this. Like you have these, uh, you have these YouTubers and, and they do their tests and they say, this rolling shutter is good. And then they test a black magic camera and it performs like poorly because they do, they're not great. But they never follow that up with, oh, by the way, you can fix this by pressing this button. I want to talk about rolling shutter and black magic cams. The way they work is the sensor scans from the top of the sensor down to the bottom of the sensor, which, because the image is flipped by the lens, essentially means the bottom of the image is a fraction of a second ahead of the top of the image. And the effect this creates is when you move the camera, the image wobbles and it's called the jello effect. Lately, um, I've been looking to upgrade my camera and I've been looking at the new Blackmagic full frame L-mount camera, the, it's not, not the pocket, the cinema camera 6K. And a problem that a lot of these full frame sensors have is that their rolling shutter is not great. The longer it takes a sensor to read the whole image, the more pronounced the jello effect becomes. When we complain about rolling shutter, a lot of people say that uh, how often do you actually move the camera with that much speed that you actually notice? And it's true that you won't be able to take a still out of the video and say that anything looks wrong about it. But in motion, if you're doing handheld, a, a slow rolling shutter performance is actually I think quite noticeable on a, a subconscious level. The, the image feels kind of shaky and, and wobbly, which is why I've been heavily considering for my next camera, moving away from Blackmagic, which I don't want to do because I like the menu systems, I like B-ROM and I like the way images on Blackmagic cameras look. But traditionally, they have slow sensors. Their sensor readout speeds have always been around 20 milliseconds, which is high. For reference, one of the best, fastest sensors on the market in this price range is uh, the Sony FX3, which is less than 10 milliseconds. It's, it's twice as fast as most of its competitors on, in its price range. However, the other day, I discovered something that, for me, kind of makes it not a problem anymore. A while ago, Blackmagic released an update for their pocket cameras, which included something called gyro stabilization. Uh, what that does is it uses the uh, gyroscopic components inside the camera to record the camera's motion and it uses that data to um, more perfectly stabilize in post uh, your image if you have a, a shaky image. I thought that was cool at the time um, but I didn't really have that much interest because frankly I, I don't like stabilizing my image in post if I can help it. I find that often you introduce new artifacts that when you stabilize an image that I find more distracting than the shaky camera itself. I much prefer to just add more mass to my rig or use a gimbal and remove the, the jitters and the, and the vibrations more organically doing it that way. So I didn't, I didn't think much of it. I thought, cool, uh, it's nice that they did that and didn't think of it again. But when I was researching the new Blackmagic Cinema 6K, I was trying to look at what the readout speed was so I would know how bad the rolling shutter effects are going to be on the new camera and I came across a forum post that mentioned in passing that the gyro stabilization corrects rolling shutter. That's really interesting I thought and I did some more googling and all I could find was these offhand comments. There weren't any YouTube videos or articles explaining that you could do this so I thought well, I'll just, I have a pocket camera. I'll just, I'll just take it out to uh, the woodland that's uh, near where I live and I'll record some footage and, and try it out. And well, th this is what I did. So this is the footage I've converted to Rec 709. And basically what I've done is, is just move the camera from side to side to try and create the jello effect. And I'm going to see what happens when we stabilize it. And as you can see here, when I move from side to side, you get that standard wobbliness with the, uh, the straight lines. If you look at the tree in the middle, it does this. 
And it's that that I, I really hate when you see handheld footage and it gets this jiggly effect. If I just, if I just pause here, you can see there really obviously, see how wobbly that is? So what we do is we go into colour and I told the camera um, ahead of time, you have to go into the settings and you have to tell the camera what focal length of lens you're using. If you have a lens with uh, contact points and it communicates with the camera, uh, the camera should know automatically what the focal length is. But I'm, I'm using a dumb lens, so um, I told it ahead of time. So you just go down here to select camera gyro. It's probably going to be on perspective automatically. Click that. And you go to the strength. Now that will, if you put the strength down to zero, it won't stabilize the image at all. But it will still correct for rolling shutter. So I put this down to zero. Let's click stabilize. You have to wait for it to go. Um, it does take some time. That's a bummer. Right, so it's done. So let's let's have a look how it looks now. And it's it's gone. It's gone. It looks now like I shot this with a camera with global shutter, which is amazing. And just to show you, if I if I remove the zoom, you can see just how mu how distorted the footage was when when I moved it because. Look, see how how slanted it becomes when it's being corrected. That's how that's how distorted the image was. What baffles me is that I did not know about this until yesterday when I figured this out. Why why is nobody talking about this? I'm like, am I going crazy? I feel like I should know about this. It should have been mentioned. Like you have these uh, you have these YouTubers and and they do their tests and they say this rolling shutter is good and then they test the black magic camera and it performs like poorly because they do they're not great at, at rolling shutter um, but they never follow that up with oh by the way you can fix this by pressing this button uh, does everyone else know about this or is it just me because for me, this is big. This is really important. For me, this can be the difference between going for the new Blackmagic camera versus the S5 II. Because the Blackmagic camera will have this feature and the S5 won't. And it would make me want to get the Blackmagic over the FX3 because now it's not an issue. For, the, for some of the few shots where I have this rolling shutter problem, I can just stabilize it. I can just make, make sure I put the lens in and it's fixed. Just like that. But nobody's talking about it. Like for me, rolling shutter has now just become a non-issue. When a few days ago, it was the, the main thing that I was worrying about. I don't know. I, that's, I feel like I'm going crazy. It's such a simple thing, but does, does nobody... Did you know about this? I wondered if it would just do side to side, but it also does up and down. You can see here. Look, look how squashed that is. Look how distorted that would be. There are downsides. It's, it's not, it doesn't fix everything. It, it can only affect jello that is caused by the movement of the camera itself. It can't, it, for instance, if you're shooting a car commercial and you're shooting from a moving car and the background is all kind of wonky because you've got rolling shutter out of it, it can't fix that. But to be honest, that only for me that doesn't come up very often, and when it does, it isn't as distracting to me as Jello over the whole screen. So I am willing to make that compromise quite happily. Uh, but if you shoot car commercials as a niche, you should probably get something like the FX3 or the Komodo with a global shutter. It won't remove uh, strobing effects, of course, from. Um, an, an oscillating light source, like a, a dimmed LED. But again, I don't run into that very often. I usually control my own lighting, so it's not an issue for me. My main issue with rolling shutter was having jello-y handheld footage. And now that I know that I can do this, it's completely changed how concerned I am about the whole thing. I'm just not bothered by rolling shutter anymore. Anyway, on the off chance I'm not crazy, and other people also don't know about this, um, I thought I'd just make this video to put that out there. Mm -hmm.